Hi everybody and welcome back to Built Not Bought Campers. It's such a lovely day. I parked my backside in the back of the truck. Just me, myself, and a cup of tea. Mind you, one of my subscribers said it was more like a cup of hot milk. Well it is, because that's how I drink my tea. Can't stand builder's tea. Anyway. I want to touch on a little bit of a controversial subject at the moment. As you know now, Camp Quirky has been cancelled two years in a row. And this year they've decided to return everybody's ticket price uh, minus the booking fee. And I've been keeping an eye on the Camp Quirky Facebook pages and there's a lot of people complaining and moaning about the ticket fee and they're not getting it back. I totally get that, especially if you don't have a lot of money anyway and you rely on money. The fact is, you know, this money we haven't had for ages. You know, I get that somebody's keeping money we've had no use from. And, you know, I totally get the fact that, you know, people are upset about that. The problem is, Camp Quirky are not actually responsible for the booking fee. It's the company they employ that sells the tickets and that's how they make their money. So really, you know, I've noticed a lot of people really, really having a go at the guys from Camp Quirky. Do you know, it's not their fault. And, you know, I've watched their comments and what they've been saying. You know, bless them, they've just gone through COVID themselves. You know, and they're fighting our corner regarding the booking fee. So, you know, everybody that's having a go at them, you know, leave them alone, there's, there's no need for it. And I think you'll find a lot of other people out there feel the same about it. You know, I'm upset I've lost I think I don't think one of four quid, whatever it was, for a booking fee. You know, I'm you know a bit fed up about it as well. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I totally disagree with it, but you know, it's. I feel it's not Camp Quirky's fault. But there's a lot of people out there targeting them and having a real go at them. I know they're the first point of contact. It's their event, but they're not the people behind keeping the booking fee. And it's the ticket suppliers. And it's like when you book a ticket to go to a festival, or a concert, or anything, you pay a booking fee and it's the ticket sellers way of making money you know that's how they that's how they run their business but again it's you know to me i find that a little bit it's a little bit controversial because at the end of the day i say don't have a go at them it's not their fault because it's not their fault you know and i think if anybody run their own sort of festival they're not going to sell their own tickets they're going to use outsource that to a specialist company that deals in that sort of thing so yeah that's my feeling and my take on it i don't know what everybody else is you know leave your comments below if you hate me for it let me know but you know i do have my own feelings on it you know everybody's got opinions and i just wanted to express mine today um because i am going to try and put out some more vlogs as well as the camper build videos because at the moment we're still waiting to travel and we're still waiting to go out in the camper vans and you know i know some people are living in their vans and over the sort of last year have gone through some real real hassle and grief through living in their vans and again something else i totally disagree with at the end of the day if you want to live in a van and it's easier for you and you know some people do it out of choice some people do it out of circumstance and you know it doesn't matter for whatever reason somebody's living in their van you know leave them alone that's their life as long as they're not hurting anybody yeah i know there's a lot of people out there going out in their vans parking up having a whale of a time and then leaving their rubbish do you know what they're the people that really really grime me grime me to death do you know what if you go out when you're going out for the day in your van where you go even if you're not using a van everybody if you're going out wherever you go there's no bins around take your rubbish home with you don't just bin it on the floor don't, you know it do you know that does get to me and i totally support van lifers when i see them go out there and they produce their videos and they're picking up other people's litters you know fair play to you you know you deserve you know the thanks that you you know i'm going to give you but it's again another controversial subject van lifers do you know what if i was in the position too i'd be in my van living full time i would but there again you've you've got a van wherever you're going to be if you're going to eat drink outside carry a bag bin bag put it in take it off and go and take it to a bin somewhere 
there's enough service stations out there, there's enough garages, you know, they've all got bins on the forecourts for crikey. You know, it's... So yeah, that sort, all this sort of thing upsets me. Um, not to the point that I have to get really sort, of, really sort of highly passionate about it, but passionate enough that I think, you know, I've got to say something, and hence why I'm giving this video today. So yeah, I'm going to try and produce a few more vlogs along with the van builds, and the moment we can start travelling, I'll be out on the road as well, and you'll get a few travel videos from me. If there's any anywhere particular in the UK you'd love to see footage from, because obviously I'm going to put up a drone, we've got a drone, I've got the cameras, so I'd love to know, leave in the comments below some nice spots that you think I should visit and that I should film, um, because I want to do this. And again, I do this for everybody out there and anybody that subscribes. Do you know what? I really appreciate it. My channel's growing nicely. I'm quite happy. Um, I love doing the filming. Um, I've got to a stage where, you know, at first it was very daunting. I didn't know what to do. I, um, and there's a YouTube channel out there, Think Media, and the guy on there, um, he has a little sign in. I think it's his startup music. Um, just pick up the camera and record. And. I've been waiting to pick up the camera and start recording for nearly two years um, and I started a couple of months ago and do you know it terrified me sitting here talking to a gadget um, it terrified the hell out of me I didn't know what to do or you know if you should see some of the outtakes of my videos right now um, there'd be a lot of bleeping on it um, especially one I was doing yesterday I just Sometimes I can't just get the words out. I know what I want to say. I think what I want to say is just getting the words out. And, you know, people say write scripts, but I can't read from a script. Um, it'd be like, I'd sound like a robot, you know, like a newsreader. You know, it just doesn't work for me. I suppose I need to think a little bit more clearly, talk a little bit more slowly. Anyway, uh, it's... You know, it, it's what life is. We are we are who we are. Um, no one's perfect. If you are perfect, leave it in the comment below. Tell me you're perfect. I want to know why you're perfect. What makes you perfect? So yeah, it's this is. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna produce these little vlogs. You know, it's my opinion on life. Sometimes I think, and we got such a glorious day today. You know, sitting here with a cuppa. Um, yeah, I'm sat in the back of my truck, of all places. I could be sat anywhere. Um, it's a beautiful sight here. And we've got loads, you know, I could sit anywhere. But do you know what? This seems the perfect place to sit here and talk to you lot. And drink my cup of tea while I have a rest from building the van. Because today, I'm actually changing my light bar. Um, I'm not changing it as in replacing it. I'm changing the position of it. Um, one of my friends said to me, the light bar's too high. Now, I had that thought as well, but I chose to ignore it. And I knew someone would point it out, and he did. So, um, I did have another idea, and he suggested exactly what I was thinking. So, it's gonna go from up there. Um, it's, I'm gonna actually rotate it and put it down. So the bracket's not facing up, the bracket's gonna go face forward, and the bar will be in front, so it's almost so the bar's going to come down and forward and it'd be more in line with the solar panel so it'd be more streamlined it's a fan it's not a racing car but it'd be more streamlined so that's one of the things i'm going to do also i've in two of my videos i have put out that i've been using these things called piggyback fuses and it's a lazy way to get alive to an accessory on your fan and it is a lazy way. So, you know, now I put those two videos out, I, something else I'm gonna change. I'm actually gonna hardwire them. Um, again, the same friend that mentioned about the light bar pointed out that as well. And again, I was thinking that, and cowboy was mentioned, but when the, regarding the fuses, but, uh, or the piggyback fuses, should I say. But, you know, I wouldn't be happy selling that. I knew I'd be changing that. 
before I sold it. But it's just something out there that some people aren't confident to cut into a live wire in their van and stick something else in the middle of it. But, you know, I don't have a problem with it. I've done it so many times, it's sort of second nature. You can almost do it with your eyes shut, but wouldn't want to try. So yeah, the piggyback fuses will be going and it's gonna be properly hardwired in. But it's just something out there that everybody else can get to grips with. They can see how one of those works. But yeah, so they will be changed and the light bar is gonna be moved. But once the van is finished, I'll be giving you a full van tour of it. Um, and I will be giving, if somebody wants to buy it, they can, they can come and have a look at it. On who watches my channel, it's totally up to them. And I suppose a nice thing is, because I've done the video diary of the build, um, whoever buys it can see what it looked like from start to finish. And I think that's one of the bonuses of doing these videos as well. And there's a plane flying over. Not a big plane for somebody going on holiday. Oh, I wish. Um, although I love my van life stuff, I do wish I could go away on holiday right now. Anyway, back to the van life stuff. Um, I found a supplier for furniture board. Now, these people that make furniture board only make it a certain amount of each type of design. And I nearly missed out on the design that I wanted for the traffic. Now, this furniture board is absolutely lovely. It's called Grey Smoke. Now, there's only 200 sheets of that stuff being made. And I ended up with 20 sheets of it. Um, it's the graded board. There's a few marks on edges and stuff, but that doesn't matter because, you know, I've got to cut it down anyway. But I'll show you that in a second. And let me know what you think. But I love it. It's absolutely stunning. And that board is going to be going into the Renault and also the VW uh, Crafter conversion. So I think that's it for me today. I think you've listened to enough of my little dulcet tones. And I think that um, I've said my little bit of controversial. I think I've mentioned my controversial side of things regarding Camp Quirky tickets and people and their rubbish when they go out and about. Pick it up people, take it home with you for God's sake, stick it in a bin somewhere. Do you know, that really bugs me. I could really, really get... But I won't. So anyway, shall we go and have a look at the furniture board that's going inside the Renault traffic at the VW Crafter? Yeah, of course we do. Right, so that is the furniture board that we're putting in the vehicles. Let's see if you can get a close-up look at that design. It's called Grey Smoke. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. But the problem is, they only make a few sheets of each design. And they've told me they're going to keep me updated with other designs that come up. Anyway, I love it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I don't know if you notice, my van is missing. My camper's gone. Anyway, should we go and find it? I'll show you where it is. It's been a bit poorly lately. It had an MOT and on the way back from the MOT station, it decided to put a, a light on the dash. I think it's an airbag sensor. So, there it is. Just there. Anyway, my mechanic at the moment is actually talking to somebody. Hopefully when he's done, I might try and get him on camera. See if we can get him to tell us what's wrong with it. I think it's the, to be honest, I think it is the um, ABS sensor. I think it's the ABS sensor, but I need to have a look at the, he said he's supposed to be looking at it this morning and fingers crossed we can find out exactly what's wrong with it in a moment yeah he doesn't like being on camera anyway what's going to happen is um he's putting on a diagnostics 
we're pretty much sure it's one of the ABS sensors over on the front or the back. I have had one of the rear ones done before. But anyway, enough of that. As part of today's vlog, I've just literally driven past something and I'll tell you something, it's amazing. This is a camper van channel. So let's have a look at a really nice camper van and it's a classic. Look at that. You got the Airstream Caravans, that is an Airstream Classic motorhome. That is a real nice, oh man, that's what you call a dream. Anyway, that's what I found just on one of my travels. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think of that. It is amazing. Tell me, would you like to live in one of them? Would you like to be a van lifer in one of those? I think if I had one of them, I don't think I'd ever own bricks and mortar ever. Anyway, I'm going to get back on the road for now. That's it for today. And I hope, like me, somebody out there is enjoying this weather as much as I am. I hope you're staying safe. Hope you're staying well. Hope you're staying happy. Bye for now.